Welcome to today's tutorial. In this video, you will learn how to make a modern, interior scene from scratch, with Blender to D5 workflow. Here is the scene that I modeled in Blender. To move and adjust everything with ease, I recommend synchronizing the model to D5 using D5 Converter Blender. Click the Sync button, then the model will be imported into D5 in a blink. To have lights from outside come into the room, press shortcut key I and choose the transparent material template for the glass. Then let's adjust the natural lighting. First I want to import a cloudy day HDRI, and you can rotate HDRIs in D5 as you like. It's better to turn off auto exposure, before you play with the adjustable sunlight parameters to get the proper lighting. Then comes artificial lighting, which is a must for interior spaces. I'm adding a rectangular light, shortcut key 4. Then scale it up to make the light big enough to reach the whole room. Then I'll place it higher and away from the window, adjust its angle, attenuation radius and other parameters, until I get the ideal effect. This will serve as the main light source of the living room. Moving on, I'm adding another rectangular light as supplementary lighting for the living room. This one should be a little smaller than the window, and I'll place it right outside the house. Press the shortcut key I to activate Material Picker, and click on the surface of a model, to activate Material Editing tab on the right. As for the wooden floor, I'd like to make the natural wood texture more obvious, so I inserted a roughness map from Quixel into base color, and adjusted its UV, to make it look more realistic. You can also choose from D5 Material Library. The Batch Import PBR Textures feature in D5 is of great use, for it allows you to import multiple maps into corresponding slots all at once, which will spare you a lot of time. Here I multi-selected the albedo, AO, displacement, normal, and roughness maps for the concrete material of the ceiling. And they are successfully recognized and imported, so I'll just adjust the UV for it. You can always reuse the materials you've already adjusted, to speed up the work. You see, I'll just press the shortcut key I, and click the ceiling, press shortcut key O, to apply the ceilings material to this part of wall near the ceiling. With D5 Converter Blender, you'll be able to synchronize the furniture to D5, in D5A format. Once you've placed the furniture in the right spot, you can then work on material adjustment. As I've mentioned, try batch import PBR textures feature as a time-saving tool. For the surface of this coffee table, I applied a light gray plaster texture to it. To make a classic wooden cabinet, find a suitable texture map for it, and adjust the UV and color. Once this part is done, you can copy and paste the material, for other parts of the kitchen cabinet. When it comes to the metal tap, pay attention to the metallic parameter. I usually pull it to the far right, and set the base color lighter and adjust the saturation, and roughness a little. It works similarly on door handles, and the sink. Since the sink is stainless material, roughness can be set higher. If needed, you can import a roughness map with scratches for the metal materials, to create a more realistic effect. According to the atmosphere of space you achieved, see if certain materials need more adjustment. 
Remember to pay attention to niche or other spaces that lack incoming lights, avoiding materials that look too dark compared to the surroundings. You can pull up the brightness value of base color a little bit. Here I'll apply some of the ready-to-use materials elsewhere. The material of cabinet even works well on the chair. Feel free to apply it wherever it fits. The other furniture also needs some adjustment. There's no strict rule to follow, just try to make everything blend into the whole space and atmosphere. As a finishing touch to the living room, import a carpet model here and apply a plush carpet texture map to it. I'll also add a base color map and a normal map for it, to achieve a realistic rug effect. When placing chairs or other parts of furnishing, you can switch to top view and turn on wireframe mode to get a clear view of the space as you do in CAD software. If you find any part missing in the model while you're rendering in D5, don't worry, you can make the necessary editing anytime in your modeling software. For example, I am now back in Blender adding baseboard to the wall. I tend to turn on round corner for this part. When it's done, I start the live sync and continue my work in D5. Select the track lights on the ceiling with material picker, to adjust its settings. Turn on emissive, and give it a warm to medium color temperature of around 3000 kelvins. For other emissive lights, you can adjust them the same way. Alright. Let's move on to adding light sources. I added a spotlight, shortcut 2, with cone angle set at max, to expand the range of lighting. With three copies of it, I now have four spotlights in the shape of a square. Group these four, drag this light group to the window and adjust it to fill the living room, with soft and beautiful lighting. You can refer to my parameters for this scene. Going to another space inside, you'll find the hallway a little dark so I'll add a rectangular light at each end of it. And observe the lighting from inside the living room, to see the results as I adjust the lights. Considering lights from here are not the main lighting, I'll set an appropriate intensity value and attenuation radius for it.
first thing is to hide components that stand in the way, so you can better observe the scene. I choose the classic one-point perspective. For field of view, depth of field and other camera settings, adjust them according to the scene you're dealing with. It's time for output. That completes today's tutorial on how to make an interior scene with Blender D5 workflow. You can download the scene on D5 forum to have a try yourself. Thanks for watching.